You guys, I bought the Glamcore light and today is my first day using it. I don't know how I feel. Ooh, that's probably way too bright. I don't know. Okay, we're gonna try it like, okay. Mm. What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a sassy one. Uh, if you couldn't tell by the title of the video and forewarning right now, if you have young children or if you are put off by <laughs> curse words, this may not be the video for you or maybe it would be time to maybe grab some headphones or maybe like wait till the kids are asleep because I'm just not going to hold back in this one. So I'm going to let you pause right now before we move on. And today we are going to be talking about makeup products, expensive makeup products that I think are shit. So I have a list of like between 10 and 15. I'm looking over my list and some of them I'm like, well, I don't know if that was like really fair. So I'm like, mm. but then as I was like sitting down to prepare this video, I was like, ooh, <laughs> that was an expensive product and that product is shit. So if you guys are interested in hearing me roast some products, most of these I don't even still own in my collection, but have tried them at one time or another and been like, eh, what the That's what today's video is going to be about. So uh, if you are excited, then I don't know where I'm going with that statement. Um, first, if we, for the, first, before we get into the video, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel and are not offended by today's topic or some of the things that I say, I hope by the end of the video, you will consider subscribing before you go. The red subscribe button is just down in the description box. Um, I do post a minimum of four times a week. So if that's something that interests you, then don't forget to subscribe before moving on. But, uh, other than that, let's just jump into some shitty products. Okay. I'm fiddling with my lighting. I don't know if it's going to work or not work. All right, you guys, let's get into it. I, I feel like I'm going to offend some people with some of the things that I'm going to say, because some of these are like legit cult classic favorites, but I am feeling extra sassy today and it could be it could be because my eye makeup didn't turn out how I wanted. Oh, also, I am currently tanning, so my neck probably looks like green. I tried to cover it up, but you know how it is. Okay, you guys, up first, I have... <laughs> I'm scared to say this one. Vizier eyeshadow palettes. I just don't think these are good, and I get... I get it. The whole purpose of these shadows is to build them up. I get their buildable shadows, but I've heard people say they're like so blendable and so easy to use. And I feel like I could sit there for two hours trying to build up my shadow and I still would have this like super like subdued, like just not the look I'm going for. I have tried the like 12 pan warm neutrals palette that costs $80 waste of my money and I have tried one of the six pan theory palettes I think they are waste of my money and then I've also tried at least one if not two of the petite pros waste of my freaking money like there are just better formulas out there for less for more but it's just I do not get the appeal of these and I know that a lot of people love these I get it the one thing that sucks though is I I do feel like they constantly release very fun inspiring color stories that make me want to try again they make me want to buy them because they are pretty and I'm like yeah I really want these to work for me but I just ugh, they just don't so anyway that is why I had to mention the Viseart palettes I feel like I'm never gonna figure my lighting out you guys I'm sorry okay up up to two up second is the Pat McGrath fetish I think it's the fetish mascara how do like how how is this on the market this mascara I need to take a sip I'm getting like heated this mascara transferred so incredibly bad I, I like literally had mascara down to my lips it looks like like it looked like I had like possibly tried to use black lipstick that day like it was ridiculous I don't understand how a mascara can transfer that much and I don't understand how this mascara is still on the shelves and this mascara retails for $30 
that is absurd for a shitty mascara no pat no again with the lighting i'm sorry you guys the lighting is probably going to change a million times in this video okay up number three this is an og classic and i feel like this is one that just got hype because so many youtubers used to push this product but it's the hourglass vanish stick foundation no this maybe if you maybe if you had like more oily skin maybe this would work for you but with my dry skin it was hard to blend out it was so full coverage i think my biggest gripe with it was it was just so full coverage and that is just not what i was going for but this was like in my early like years of youtube and watching youtube so i just thought like whatever was working for whoever i was watching was gonna look perfect on me and let me tell you i also probably just had the wrong shade like it was just terrible it looked so bad on me this foundation retails for 46 dollars, and you do not get a ton of product in this one either so i feel like if you consistently use this you would fly through this product and i just feel like it's not worth it also why do people what like what is the appeal of stick foundations if you are a stick foundation loving gal or guy please let me know what you love so much about it because i've just never been a fan of stick foundations they're just in my opinion harder to blend out it's just like wouldn't it be easier to be i like i don't know i don't know i just don't love the stick foundation in general and i did not get on with the hourglass vanish stick especially for 46 dollars. eventually i made myself let go of that like i couldn't even get myself to finish that foundation i felt like it was just so not me speaking of horrifyingly bad foundations for me um i'm not gonna mentor or mentor <laughs> not gonna mention the wander beauty foundation today although if you guys watch my channel you you know i don't like that foundation but i'm not gonna talk about it because i feel like it's just not like it's not to the point of like absolute garbage but it's just not for me but the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation, <laughs> how did they sell this stuff? So full coverage, and again, I get there is a market out there for full coverage foundations, but this oxidized so bad, I don't know how you could find a shade that actually matched you, because I, <sighs> whoo, I remember one day I put this on for work, and I, again, was a, very much a novice in makeup at this time. I still feel like I am, but like, I mean, I was like a toddler learning to walk, I love a baby learning to walk. And I would like make it a few steps and still fall down. Like that's where I was at in my makeup level of ability. But I put on the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. Again, everyone was pumping this foundation. So I was like, yep, this is going to make me look flawless, beautiful. I mean, whoo, I'm going to be a looker with this foundation on. And I remember I put it on for work one day and I got to work and I put like you know your car like visor or whatever that you put down and you look in your mirror and it is literally the most telling when you look in that mirror <laughs> you will know truly how you actually look in real life like you're not getting the indoor lighting you're getting like the sunlight into your car and then it's just it tells a lot it tells a big story I am not kidding I've made jokes like this before about like it looks like I rub Doritos on my face it looks like I had taken the largest party size bag of Cheetos and literally put my head into it, crushed the chips around. My face was so orange. It was horrifying. And thank goodness at this time I carried like an emergency bag in my purse where I had like Mari Budescu spray in case I was looking like cakey. Um, and I also had makeup wipes. I literally wiped my entire face of makeup off because I was so horrified at how I looked and I just went bare face to work. And at that point, like not a lot of people had seen me bare face at work. Over time, I grew to like not really care. But I remember people being like, Steph, <laughs> no makeup today? And I was like, no, I did have makeup on, but trust me, I may not, you may not think so, but what you're seeing right now is better than what would have been if I did not wipe that makeup off in the car really bad and I believe that that foundation retailed for about $40 <laughs> you may as well just take two 20s and flush them down the toilet all right number five I feel like there is appeal there is an appeal to this product but it just wasn't for me and it is the milk makeup blur stick I love milk makeup as a brand they are one of my favorite brands they just intrigue me they just make me feel something different 
because I feel like the brand overall is something different. They don't try to just be like your basic bitch in makeup. Like they try to be trendy. They're like the hipsters of the makeup world, if you get my drift. I don't mind the stick products. I love my Milk, bake, milk Makeup Baked Bronzing Stick. I love that product. I like my cream blush products that are in the stick form, but I just don't love my primer in stick form. And I am a primer snob. Also, I felt like this one just like it was dry and it just dragged and it just felt like it was pulling my skin and trust me I am not someone that pats her skincare into her skin like I don't mind rubbing like am I gonna really get wrinkles from rubbing my skincare in maybe I don't really care about that but it just I was dra it like dragged so bad that I was like am I gonna get wrinkles from putting this primer on my face because I'm tugging at my skin so bad so this one just did not work for me. I feel like if you had oily skin, you would really like this. I prefer more of a hydrating primer. I'm not always looking for a pore filling primer. Um, it did a nice job of smoothing, but it just was not a primer for me. $36, not for me. I do get the appeal of this primer to some, but for me, definite not. I've talked about this a couple of times here and there on my channel. And I'm not alone in this. My sister is right there with me. And what's funny is, I'm, I'm my foot fell asleep. Um, that's not what's funny. My sister and I purchased this foundation together. It is the Josie Mehron Vibrancy Foundation. And again, I know a lot of people really do love this foundation. Do you guys remember OG Jaclyn Hill? This was all she wore for foundation. Literally all she wore. And she would talk about how it's the best foundation. It made her skin look so luminous and dewy and beautiful. And this was at a time where I preferred a more luminous. Now I prefer like natural with like a hint of a glow. But I liked more of a luminous finish. You guys, this was not a luminous finish on me. It was a slip and slide on my face of foundation. Even set with a powder, it was just all over the place. It did just, <laughs> mm, didn't look good. This was a $45 foundation. I truly thought that this was going to become my holy grail foundation just because Jaclyn Hill had sold me on it. Like she sells so many people on so many things. Um, and my sister was in the same boat. And I remember like three or four months later, both of us were talking and we were like, hey, like, remember that Josie Mehron Vibrancy Foundation we, we both bought? <laughs> Did it work for you? And both of us were like, oh my goodness, no, that was horrible. It was so greasy. And granted, my sister has more oily skin than me, um, but I had like pretty dry skin back in the day and still, mm, that one did not work for me. Um, I also, my pump broke on mine and my pump broke on my sister. So I don't know if that was just like a packaging flaw in general or we just both happened to get, you know, randomly to that the pump broke on, but... <laughs> I ended up throwing that foundation away because my pump was broken and it just, oh, did not work for me. Okay, the next product I want to talk about, I wouldn't say is shit. It's just like, it's $55 and I mean like, come on. And it is the Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow Instant Soft Focus Primer. There is literally nothing special about this. You could throw this in like Catrice packaging, in my opinion. And it would be like, okay, like that's a nice primer. But $55 for a primer that just gives you like a subtle soft glow. I feel like there's iridescent gold glitter that runs through it. It, no, no. There are so many other primers that I feel like are more worth it than this. Even high-end primers, you guys know. I love my First Aid Beauty primers. What other primer? Like the... First Light Priming Filter from Becca, which is $39, I feel like I would even recommend over this. It, that First Light Priming Filter is still going to give you a glow and you aren't going to have to shell out $55 for a primer that's not going to make your makeup last longer. It's just going to give a subtle glow and then you're probably going to put foundation over it and you're not even going to see it. No. Oh, another primer. The Smashbox Pore Filling Primer. This is a product that I hate panned. I made myself finish this primer because I had like committed so much. This is how I feel about the Wander Beauty Foundation. I'd committed so much of myself already that by the time I decided I truly despised 
this product I had used so much of it and the like project painter in me and the person who's like counting the number of makeup empties she's using and the value like I was like no girl like you've already used half you gotta finish this it is such a terrible primer in my opinion it pills so badly like literally I could like I could just take a little squirt of it dab it on my cheek and not even be rubbing it in yet and it would just mm, it was pilling it was already pilling it was ridiculous like it such a frustrating product to use I don't know how they sell this stuff again maybe it works if you have more oily skin but for me absolutely not I would highly recommend still the Smashbox photo finish like the hydrating one the one that's like white I like that one and there's a couple other from Smashbox that I think are okay but the pore filling one is an absolute no for me and I know there are a lot of people out there that like this one but $39 is it 39 it might be up to like 41 mmm hard pass for me you guys this next one oh my gosh it made me so mad okay the next one I'm gonna get on I'm gonna sit pretzel leg now um I've been making my own matcha lattes really good Okay, so Natasha Denona, very expensive brand. I had already purchased her Lila palette for $129, and I loved that palette, and even though it pained me to know how much I spent on it, I was willing to spend that again if there was a palette that spoke to me. Then the Safari palette released, and I was like, everything about that palette just like made me feel things that I don't typically feel about an eyeshadow palette from the packaging to the shadows inside I was freaking pumped about this palette and I know a lot of people love this palette but I know some people have gotten some duds so I don't know if there was just like a bad batch or what but it was almost unusable and this was something that I wanted to do like a dedicated review on my channel so I used every single shade in that uh, palette multiple times try and mix different shades together to see how different shades mix together and I just nothing would blend right things like almost oxidized on the eyes weird I remember there was like the top row that had like the beautiful like slate grays and they just did not like I think about a couple of the eye looks that I made and they're like gaggable there were like two shades in the palette that I really loved but I honestly could not justify keeping that palette for two shades spending literally if you divide $129 by two what does that equal 65 yeah $65 per eyeshadow shade no literally no so I've noticed that that palette now is on sale for half off at Sephora and again I feel like I've seen a lot more positive reviews than I have negative maybe I just got a bad batch but that palette did not work for me and what a disappointment I really really am interested in the Biba palette though so if anyone has any recommendations on that do let me know um next up ooh, this is like a cult classic fave too but the YSL Touche Cut blurring primer First of all, when I purchased this, I purchased this like on a whim. I was just over in the YSL section feeling like I needed a little bit more YSL in my life. Why? I don't know. I was maybe feeling just a little bit bougie that day. Um, so I bought the blurring primer for $52, which is absurd. And it's like the clear smoothing primer that has like the gold flakes in it. It reminded me, oh, it reminded me of one of my favorite college drinks, Goldschlager. Who has drank Goldschlager in your life where you literally feel like the world's biggest badass because you are drinking gold flakes <laughs> i have fond memories of the day after i graduated college being introduced to gold schlager <laughs> and it just brings back very fond funny warm blurry memories um but the ysl touche club blurring primer it was nothing special and for 54 dollars for a primer and you guys i love primers i'm a primer snob 54 dollars i'm willing to pay it if it's a good primer no it wasn't i returned that shit again if that's one that you love i'm sorry if i'm offending people i do know a lot of people love that primer <laughs> first aid beauty pores beyond pore filling primer just go with that one okay take my advice Oh, this next one is a bummer, and the reason I am mentioning it is I loved it in the beginning, but it dried out way too quick. It's the Josie Mayron Vibrancy Fresh Face Palette. I freaking was obsessed with this, and this was when I didn't even like cream products. I was obsessed with this palette. I believe it retailed for $42, 
but within three or four months and I don't know if like one night mine accidentally just got like wasn't all the way tightly closed mine dried out and it made me so so sad I considered picking that palette up again just because oh, if a Sephora was open today I would <laughs> I would maybe go buy that again I liked it it was not a shitty product but it dried out so quickly that I just had to mention it because ugh, if I bought it again and it dried out in three months that I would say Again, you crumple up your 220s, your 21s, that creates $42. You literally just flush it down the toilet because mm. it was a beautiful palette though. And then I just have two more products left to mention. This one from Cover Effects. I'm not sure of the price on this. I think it's $31. It's their Illuminating Setting Spray. And when I got this in a BoxyCharm, I was super excited about it because I was like, I love Illuminating Setting Sprays, but this... I am probably taking my makeup off after this, which is why I'm willing to do this. I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera. This literally puts glitter on your face. Like if I was five years old and in a dance recital, I would be spraying this in my hair. You know when you do like the cute buns and you have the cute scrunchie that matches your leotard and then you spray like the gold, like, or not gold, just the like... The silvery sparkles in your hair. Did anyone else do that? One time I was Big Bird <laughs> for one of my ballet recitals. Can you see? I'm glowing. I'm glowing. But if you got close, you would see it's because there are glitter flecks in this. Who wants glitter flecks on their face on like a day-to-day -day basis? And unfortunately, I didn't realize this until I used this one night going to the gym. And then I looked in the mirror as I was like doing my curls. And I was like, holy shit. There is literal flecks of glitter on my face and I probably look ridiculous right now and I remember my husband was at the gym with me that day and he like looked at me because I had done um I had done like the was it the Maybelline like molten gold highlight and it was way too dark for me and he comes up to me and he's like Steph what is on your face right now you look ridiculous and I think it was a mixture of this and the molten gold highlight um, this I keep around because in the summertime I will spray this all over my body to give me a glistening glow and be like almost like a dry oil without being a dry oil because it's a setting spray. But if you're hoping that this is going to be a nice illuminating setting spray for the face, just be warned. You be warned. There is glitter in it. And then the final product I have to mention is limited edition. And I'm going to be absolutely honest with you guys. I purchased this because of the packaging. It could have been literally fairy dust inside chalk inside it could have been empty inside and I would have bought this but so this is from Mac this was limited edition it is their ignite powder face palette and I thought okay cute like it's like a highlighting palette and you have you know some like a blush topper a bronzer topper whatever you guys these are like so powdery so dry like it like looks like a disgusting swatch on the hand if you look up close it's like okay this is gonna add texture to your face you didn't even have this this one right here like is this a highlighter or is this like a freaking finishing powder because it's literally chalk that blends away into nothing the only thing I will say is the one shade that I actually don't mind out of this palette is the one shade I thought that I would never use out of this palette and it is this one right here and I like to take a really dense brush or a really loose brush and just tap this on my cheeks and it gives just like a really beautiful sort of sunburnt vibe to the cheeks you guys know I do love a good sunburnt look to the cheeks like I like it to look like I was on my patio all day sipping cocktails when in reality I was not uh, but this was if it didn't have the beautiful packaging this would have been an absolute waste of money I think it was like 42 50 or something I do think that eventually I'll probably just pop everything out and then use this as like a Z palette it has a really nice mirror so I guess I paid 42 50 for a nice mirror with marble packaging but the product inside is absolute crap and I'm, I'm not gonna lie I used to love MAC products and I just have not been impressed lately so um after that those are all of I don't know how many we actually were at I don't know the actual count but those are all the expensive makeup products that I personally think are shit you guys should leave me a comment down below leave me a poop emoji and three products you've tried in your life that you think correlate to that poop emoji 
I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Thanks so much for sticking around to watch today's video and for supporting my channel as always. And I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye.